We know that that warm weather is edging ever closer. So we're going to start and get really busy with seed sowing and potting on. We've also been really busy from autumn right up until now, trying to get some things that already going before it start of season. All the cold hardy stuff. And we've done quite a few bits and bobs. And so far, they're working out all right. We've got lots of container things, aren't we? Like these red cabbage. Perfectly happy to grow in these containers. And we've also got these little Savoy cabbages in nine centimetre pots that have survived all the way through the harsh weather that we've been having since December. And we've also got some smaller plants. Because when we're growing things, we need to stagger those sowings. So that not everything becomes available all at the same time. And also to ensure that we've got an harvest all through the season. So things like this have moved into these six packs. Little broccoli plants. And we do the same with Savoy cabbages. So we've got 12 small Savoy cabbage seedlings in there. They're not huge, but they are growing. And as long as we maintain these plants, especially things like broccoli, that the slugs like to constantly chew on, they'll keep growing and then comes the point where we have to pot them on. We've got these broad beans that we're sowing this year, a dwarf variety, and they're now starting to flower, which is great. They only grow to about the top of this stick, about 16 inches. So we'll just tie it up as it grows and then wait for those beans to start appearing. But what we're also gonna do, because we're approaching spring, is start some more of these off from seed. So we're gonna do some more packs of Savoy cabbage and we're gonna try a few more cauliflowers. They're called all year round. So again, another pack of 12. So we can have things that are just starting to germinate, things that are small seedlings, some that's a bit bigger that need potting on. And then you can see how we can stagger that planting outside once we hit spring. But apart from that, we've also had plants growing in greenhouse since last November. And we'll take a quick look at those because they've not had any fleece put on them at all. No protection whatsoever. And we know that December was probably one of the coldest months we've had for a long time. So we'll have a quick look at how these plants are getting on at greenhouses. And then we can come back and get some fresh seeds sown and maybe pot on a few of these larger plants. So starting off in this little greenhouse, you'll remember that we planted a few pak choys and some wombok Chinese cabbage. And if you saw previous videos, these were devastated by slugs. You can see damage on bottoms of leaves from earlier on. But they're still trying to grow. We weren't sure if these plants were actually going to make it. But now we've got a little bit more light and a bit warmer weather. They're now attempting to grow back. We did, however, lose a couple. But considering how harsh this weather has been, we haven't done too bad. So we'll move on to the next greenhouse and see what's happening in there as well. And that's this one, where we did all those red cabbages. And to be honest, they've done really well. Little bit of bottom leaf damage, which you can expect with slugs and snails. But overall, they're still quite good looking plants. And we've got another row on the other side as well. And again, nice looking little plants. And hopefully they're through worse now. And in this greenhouse, similar story. These are cauliflowers. And you can see that they've grown really well. They did get really knocked back by those ash frosts 
and the leaves darkened and started to sag but they've fully recovered from that as always bit of leaf damage but overall still pretty good looking plants this one I stuck a bit of a beating but it is now starting to try and form that cauliflower centre so hopefully that will recover and there's savoy cabbages in ground as well I started to try and fight back and to be fair they have had a bit of a battle of it and we've got some more larger red cabbage as well so considering that extreme cold that we've been having added to the lack of light I think that overall we've not done too bad at all and then we're going to have to start and work on rest of the garden these big oak tunnels are going to need to be just turned over a bit some fertiliser added to them and then we can start planting and we've got quite a few oak tunnels to go at which we made last year plus we're growing some flowers as well to refill this little area which we basically use just for flowers and then we've got that container garden that we set up last year which actually did really well and it's only 12 foot by 12 foot so basically we'll pack that out again with containers this year and get as many things growing as we possibly can and we'll use that old tin bath and probably fill that with onions because not everybody's got a big garden so we use this area to see just how much produce we can get from a small space with a stone bottom. But also between now and then we've got quite a bit of clearing up to do. We've got compost bins set up, they're going to need turning to make sure everything breaks down properly. And we just made them out of a couple of old pallets. So hopefully we can get some free compost at some point. And then we made that little beer garden area, which we really enjoyed last summer. Used an old shed to make a shelter. Put a few flowers in that pallet, add a nice bit of colour. And then we basically made this little homemade barbecue. So altogether it was a really nice little spot for us to sit in during those really hot summer months. So you can see that the plants in the greenhouse are now starting to bounce back because it's getting a little bit warmer now and for now we've passed those minus temperatures at night and we'll start working our way towards 6 to 10 degrees at night. We're getting nice sunny days as well which is always a bonus. So the plants out there considering the weather that we've been having are doing really good. We've got bits and bobs to clear up around the garden and we'll be more encouraged to do that as this weather picks up so we can get some of these plants put out as soon as possible because brassicas are cold hardy plants. But as always when you're doing things like this you can't just leave them you've got to stay on top of it. You don't want these getting root bound in these little containers because that's going to slow the growth down even more. So we need to get these out, get them moved on, and then get those fresh ones sown for that staggered planting. These ones at the moment, little savoys, are all right. They're not too big, so we can leave those for a while longer. But these ones are now getting a little bit too big. So what we like to do is move them on into nine centimeter pots, just for now, to encourage that root growth to expand and these plants to get that little bit bigger. Because the smaller your seedlings are, when you put them out in ground, the less chance they've got of surviving attacks by slugs. So what we'll do is we'll move them on and we'll also plant them a little bit deeper to make sure that we've got nice, upright, stable plants when we put them outside. Just really loosely fill these pots because we're going to need to press these plants right down. And you can see that they are not bad looking plants. Some's a bit chewed up, but they'll recover. But this is the problem that you get. They'll start to 
bend on that stem. So then when you try and plant them out, if you don't plant them deep enough, these plants are going to be leaning as they grow. And then obviously more susceptible to damage, not only from slugs, but damp, which will cause leaves to rot. So what we do is we plant them into another pot right down to there to get rid of that bend and ensure us nice strong plants. So if we take them out, you can see that they have got a nice little bit of a root system, but they're not root bound. There's still room at the bottom of this container. But what we need to be doing is pinching off these little leaves at the bottom. We don't need those. They're the first leaves that came out when it germinated. So we'll just take those away. And then you can see where we're gonna plant it to. So that's what we end up with. And of course, we're gonna to have to remove some of this compost as well, just so we can fit it in. But we're not gonna to go too mad at it. Just loosen all that up, best way you can. Shake a bit off, then you can see all this root system. You're not gonna hurt the plant if you do that. And then we need to get it nice and deep into this pot. So if your root ball's quite big, might be better off starting by taking some out of that container. Obviously you won't know the density of that root system until you've actually removed it. Maybe I'll fill it like that. And then you can put this plant in, push it right down as central as you can get it. Making sure you don't break that stem. So you can still see that bend on that plant, but we're burying that. So we straighten it up and then infill around it. You'll see exactly what we're doing. Give that a little shake and then straighten that plant again. Compact it down as well, because brassicas don't like growing in loose compost. Now you can see that's made a massive difference to where it were. But we are going to still bury that a little bit deeper. So again, infilling around edges. We'll just give that a bit of a shake and then we'll firm it down again. All the time making sure this plant is straight. That's basically what we're looking for. A nice, stocky, little strong plant. Rather than one like that, the way it started with that bend on it, we don't want that. So basically, I'll just pot on all the rest of these in exactly the same way. Remove that compost, and we know to half fill that container now. Then we can just drop this in keeping it as straight as we can. They also need a bit of a water because we've had a few sunny days, so. We'll infill there and there, and then we'll press this plant down, straightening it as we go, just like last time. Keeping that soil nice and compacted. So just for the sake of a couple of minutes, we've got two much better looking plants. And then we'll give them a really good soak. So you can see that that's quite a quick, easy job. But depending on part of the country that you live, you might not be in a situation where it's really safe to get them planted outside straight away. So the only way to combat that is to keep moving them on until you know it's safe. Because although these plants are cold hardy, you don't really want severe frost damage happening to these leaves. It's just gonna slow these plants down and we're trying to speed them up. So we take those little plants out of those cells and then we end up with nice little plants that's got enough room in there to grow 
for a few more weeks if needs be. And the ones we did earlier are proof that this does work. These plants are quite happy in these containers. There's a few roots around that bottom, but it's not severe. So still, we can leave that in there a little bit longer. Which is basically what we've done with quite a few of these Savoy cabbages. This is obviously quite a bit bigger. Again, very healthy and no problems with roots at the bottom either. And we've got one that we moved on again into a slightly deeper container. We have got a few roots at the bottom of this. So this is now getting ready to be moved on again. But it's still all right for quite a few more weeks. And it's a really big, healthy looking cauliflower, this one. And then we've moved another one into this container. It's not as deep, but it's a bit wider. So the roots won't be going round and round and round the bottom because they've got plenty of room to spread out in this one. And that's another Savoy cabbage. And you can see, it's a pretty happy plant. And as part of this experiment that we tend to do every year with containers, we've then moved another one into an even bigger container. And the idea behind this is it stays in this container until it's time to harvest. So again, another cauliflower, really nice big plant, plenty of room. And all we do is add a little bit of fish blood and bone to it, just to boost those nutrients. Although it's not really time, in some areas to get these brassicas planted out for fear of damage. If you do the same thing we do, you can start your seeds off in these little cells till they get to an half decent size. They can be put in a slightly bigger container to grow on that bit better. And then you can stage them in various pots. And then after that, the choice is yours. You can just keep staging these on until you know it's safe to plant them out or you can grow them in containers this size. And when we do this, we'll be expecting a small harvest from each plant. But a small harvest of any plant is better than none at all because we just didn't wait long enough before we started planting. And things like this are obviously going to be part of that container garden area that we did last year. And we had quite a bit of success with that as well. So for people who've only got small spaces to grow things in, we like to do that to show just how much you can get from only a 12 foot by 12 foot area by planting everything in containers. Now I've got some seeds that I need to get sowing. We're going to do some more Savoy cabbage. We've got some all year round cauliflowers and then we're doing a new one called broccoletta which produces really small broccoli type heads with a couple of leaves either side of each one that shoot out of the sides of this plant and the leaves on this plant are also edible. Now we've not grown those before so we're going to get a few of those sown. We're going to take them back indoors and get them growing ready for spring. So when it does reach that time that we're ready for planting out we've already got a really good head start on that growing season. If you want to see what other plants we'll be doing and if you want to see what we're going to be putting in that container garden in a few weeks time then please hit that subscribe button and press that notifications bell and we'll see you on the next update. Take care, thank you for watching.